Hey, I'm David and this is Adobe UXP Things You Need to Know number 11. Today I'm talking about flyout menus and I will also take the chance to introduce the concept of UXP entry points. So flyout menus are the kind of menus that pop up when you click this icon in the top right corner. I usually contains a close and close tab group, but you can set here all sort of things. It's quite handy to have because, you know, most of the time you can stick here functions that saves you uh, the precious UI real estate of a panel. So in this case, I've set a reload this panel, a function that reloads the panel itself, quite handy when you debug an about dialog that actually it's just a pretty lame alert, which also means that you can tap into the host applications API. So you can run scripts from a UXP a flyout menu. And then I have an item that is toggable. So when you click it, you see that the flag disappears and then it's here again. And items can also have sub menus and you can nest them many levels deep if you need. And flyouts are also emojis friendly. You can use them in the items. Another property that you can use in items in the flyout menus is the enabled property. So basically you can set an item to be a grayed out and unreachable. But all those properties such as the toggle, or the checked actually and the enabled can be programmatically changed as well as the name itself of the item. And we will look at that in a minute. So in this case, if I click enable dynamite, you see that the self destruct item is going to be enabled, right? And then I can click this. And each time that I clicking um, an item, you see in the console that the ID of that item is logged. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at the code now. First thing you need to have the entry points object that in this case, I have a destructor from a require UXP. If you want to use an older syntax, you can say const entry points equal require UXP dot entry points, the two are perfectly equal. Now the entry points object has a setup method and it accepts a very long and complex object, which is this one. And it takes into account uh, multiple things. So first of all, you can set here commands. And I've covered those in the episode number four. But uh, in short, you remember that a UXP plugin can be made of zero or more panels and zero or more commands that are UI less scripts that you can run. And you set those here in the uh, entry point setup function. Um, another thing that you can set here besides the flyouts, which is the reason why I'm mentioning uh, entry points after all, is lifecycle hooks. And this is a mouthful, but it basically means functions that run when some things happen in the life of a plugin or a panel. So a couple of things to mention here. First, you have a couple of levels of lifecycle hooks. There are hooks that happen at the plugin level and hooks that happen at the panels level. On the plugin, uh, it's basically the create and destroy. So when the entire plugin is created, uh, meaning the panels and the commands as well, and destroyed, and the panels are hooks, uh, for instance, like the uh, create or the show or the hide and destroy when of course the panel is destroyed, hidden, shown or created. Second thing that I want to mention is that at the time of this recording, which is mid April 2021, uh, basically none of those hooks uh, currently work. For instance, the plugin level of the hooks of so the create and destroy those are not functional, uh, nor is the hide uh, the destroy and also the create at the panel level. Only the show function works. 
this here and uh, it actually kind of works because it fires just once so for instance uh, let me get back to uh, the panel let me clear the console let me refresh you see this panel shown which is the uh, log console log statement here if now I hide the panel even that and reopen it, uh, nothing here is logged anymore, nor if I close it, for instance. So I would expect to have the panel hidden um, string log, but it doesn't happen. So basically, uh, just this one kind of works, everything else doesn't, but it will in a short while. The team is working on that. And one thing that I have not mentioned is that since you can have more than one panel, you reference the panel uh, in the panels object via ID. So this is vanilla because I've set the ID of this panel as vanilla in the manifest JSON. Okay, and by the way, this is called entry points as well uh, for a reason. So uh, lifecycle hooks, we have covered those. Let me close the plugin here and we're not interested in those anymore. We have a couple of really interesting instead elements here. The invoke menu function, which is the handler for the user interaction uh, for the uh, flyer menu and the menu items array, which defines the structure of the flyer menu itself. So let me start with the menu items array first. And this is the structure that defines uh, this flyout menu here. So you see it's an array of objects and each one of those objects is an item of this flyout menu here. And we have one, two, three, four. So uh, one, two, three, and four. And let me start with the bottom one. So the reload here, um, which is this one, uh, it has an ID and a label. You need an ID each time that you need that item to respond to a click event. If you don't need that, for instance, in this uh, preferences, which acts just a sub menu, so I don't need to really check when the user clicks the preference here, you can omit the ID. And the label, well, that you need it because it's the string that uh, appears in the flyout here, okay? So we have ID, label, ID, label, and for the toggle item, we also have this checked property, which is a Boolean and it sets to true. So this is true by default, so it's checked here. Actually, uh, if you omit either the checked or the uh, enabled property, which is here, the item is unchecked and enabled by default. Okay, so we've seen the reload, the about, the toggle. Let's have a look at this preferences submenu, which is an object that has a submenu prop, which contains an array very much like the uh, menu item array. So it's an array of objects that have an ID and a label uh, property. ID and a label also for this one that has an enabled prop equal to false because this is... Uh, this self-destruct item that is grayed out. Also know that you can add a spacer, which is this one here. I don't think I need the ID for that, so I could just omit that and use just the label. You create a spacer with a label equal to a dash. So this is a minus sign, okay? And this turns um, the spacer into this um, disabled long line here. Okay, so this is the structure of the flyout menu. So let's have a look at the handler. The invoke menu handler is a function that is passed an ID of the item that has been clicked by the user. And I'm logging this uh, here first. So each time that a user does something like reload the panel, you see that uh, you have clicked menu with ID reload. Now I need to check the ID. So I've used a switch statement here. Uh, so I'm looking for the ID. I have few cases. For instance, I have the enabler and then I have the toggle ID, the reload and the about. So let me start uh, from the end. The about case, it runs a show about function. Uh, nothing uh, really fancy. The function is this one. 
const show about is a function that calls Photoshop core show alert. And again, in here, you can put whatever script, actual script that you need to run. Okay, so we have covered that. We have the reload, which is a simple window location reload. Now let's start with items that have to uh, programmatically change things to other items or th the item itself. For instance, this toggle me that toggles the flag here. And in order to change a property of an item, in the flyout menu, you first have to get the menu itself and then get the item by ID. So since I have the need to use this menu items over and over again in uh, this case and also this case, I've got this before the switch statement. So I'm using the entry points get panel uh, function. Uh, passing the ID of the panel, which is vanilla, and then I'm destructuring the menu items array. So this is basically the same menu items that you have here that I can now reference inside the uh, invoke menu function. Now that I have the menu items array, I can get the item uh, by ID. So menu items, get item, passing the ID. And in this case, I need to change the checked property of the item itself. So I don't need to explicitly write in here toggle because I'm already in the case toggle. Okay. So uh, basically, I'm getting the menu item, the item ID, the checked property, and I'm assigning the inverse of that uh, checked. So I'm toggling the Boolean state if it's false, it becomes true and vice versa. So this um, toggles the actual check mark here. Okay, fine. Now next element is this enable uh, dynamite here that instead enables the self destruct item. So it acts on a different item. So this is the case enabler this one. So this does a couple of different things. First, it changes the enabled of the dynamite. So it has to get the menu item and then get the item dynamite. So a different item uh, than itself. Then it gets the enabled property and toggles that and reverse that. So it sets to the opposite. And this is the first thing that uh, this guy does. And the second thing instead, is to change its own name. I don't know if you've noticed that, but uh, this is called enable dynamite. And if you click this, it's now called disable dynamite. It's kind of funny, but uh, I mean, it, it's just to demonstrate that you can change the label prop also. So in this case, uh, this is the line. So let me uh, move those so you can see them better. Um, you have the menu item, you get the item. In this case, it references itself, so the enabler, and then you finally access the labor property, and then you set it to something else. In this case, I've used a ternary operator to check if the, it's kind of lame, but it works. Uh, if the string is enable dynamite, it becomes disable dynamite, otherwise, it's enable dynamite. Okay, so it just toggles those in between those two uh, strings. Let me check if this works. You have disable dynamite, you click this, and the self destruct is disabled, and this is now called enable dynamite. Okay, so this is the way that this whole thing works. So let me recap what we've seen so far. We have flyout menus, which are quite handy. You can set a lot of items and sub items here. So sub menus as well. You can use emojis. Uh, you can have items with IDs, labels, and special properties such as enable, uh, which is Boolean, grays out uh, the uh, item if it's false, and check that uh, applies a check mark here. You can use those to perform actions such as scripts or launch dialogues, whatever you want. Uh, in order to set 
flyout menus, you have to use the entry points. You get the entry point, you use the setup function. Setup function um, does a lot of different things. It does um, links functions to the various commands. It can set lifecycle hooks on the plugin level and on the panel level. Basically, none of them work uh, at the moment, but they will in a short while. In the panels that you reference by ID, you can, besides the lifecycle hooks, uh, only the show works. You can set the invoke menu function and the menu items array. The menu items is for the structure of the flyout menus and the invoke menu is the handler for the click events. Okay, that's it. You can find the code for this plugin and also previous episodes plugins in my GitHub repository. Thank you for watching. Thanks especially to those fine people who have contributed with the donation. You can find a link in my blog and in the video description as well. See you in the next one. Bye.